hanging out in Laguna Beach, California. Uh, Kevin from Electric Cyclery has carried Easy Motion for a while now, and he happened to have the Evo Snow 29er. And there is no snow in sight. This is like the least snowy area ever. Um, and I don't want to get his bike super trashed. So this is probably going to be a terrible snow review, but I will give you as much information about this bike as I can, including insights, because I have ridden in snow before. So yeah, this is the Evo Snow 29er. They call it the 29er because these are 29 inch tires by 2.25. So they're, they're relatively wide. I mean, now we're seeing stuff like the Specialized Levo where it's like three inches wide and then you have four inch fat tires, but this is going to be a little bit easier more more nimble like easier to handle i think lighter weight this is not a super lightweight bike it's like 58 pounds so almost 60 about 5.6 pounds on the battery pack it's the same as all the other easy motions that i've seen for kind of 2015 2016 evo line 36 volt 11.6 amp hours not too bad one of the differences is that now some of the evo bikes have 500 watt motors this one has a 350 watt dapu internally geared hub motor in the back just like the Neo line, like kind of the, the older, more efficient, but still pretty zippy for a 350, along with a 250 DAPU powered, I'd imagine, um, internally geared front hub motor. And I do like that they went with a smaller one. They could have done two 350s, but this one's a little bit lighter weight. It's not gonna impact your steering as much. And there's not as much weight, body weight on the front. You know, if you can imagine someone sitting here, a lot of their weight is back here at the saddle and they're leaning forward, but most of the power, especially when you accelerate, it kind of shifts the weight towards the back of the bike. So I think that's excellent. Um, I love that the battery is removable because that's going to reduce the weight and that both wheels have this funky quick release system. So it's kind of like sprung. You kind of like pull out on this lever a little bit and then there's these teeth in here. So you like crank it and then pull it out and crank it again. And it's got those on both sides. So this is one of the few bikes with hub motors where they do have a really unique and effective quick release system. You can see back on the left side that they've got that little torque arm right there and that the power cable is actually tucked in between the disc brake. It's not like coming out of the axle. So if this gets dropped on its side and there is no kickstand, you're not gonna have to worry so much about it getting banged up. While we're back here, I wanna call out the Tektro Aruga 160 millimeter disc in the back, 180 up front. You get most of your stopping power up front because when you stop, your weight shifts forward. So it makes sense. Kind of an average SR Sun Tour shock here. You do have preload adjustment. You do have lockout, but I measured it and you're only getting like 60 ish millimeters of travel. It didn't say officially on the website. So that's just me approximating. Nice tires again, the Schwabi Rapid Rob with the white, kind of the little stripe. It's not reflective or anything, but it is just gonna make it look cooler. You've got some accents here, kind of a matte black with a metallic color on the frame, and then the bright yellow, which ties up into these Velo grips, locking flat. Also a Velo saddle, kind of active. And uh, yeah, being a hard tail like this, I, I like that you could put, turn this into like a capable commuter for someone who actually lives where there's snow or just wants that extra power and off-road potential. They do have bosses right here on the seat stays all the way down here, two threaded bosses there. And even the drivetrain while we're on it, I wanna call out that there are three rings up front um, up to like, I think 40 teeth on that. And then we come back here and we've got Shimano Dior XT 11 to 36 tooth so 30 30 gears is kind of a lot easy motion is notorious for having like bicycle first like lots of gears looks like a bicycle the battery just blends right in it's very stealthy in that sense so people might not even know you're riding an e-bike these motors are relatively quiet there's a little bit of a whir but it's not terrible the spokes are also painted black which is kind of nice it gives it that kind of mean cool look front and rear stainless steel 13 gauge versus 14 so they're a little bit sturdier a little bit thicker kind of nice love that the wires are integrated definitely a purpose-built e-bike frame and then the levers up here so hydraulic but they also have motor inhibitors which is great so you can kind of override the system one of the things i've noticed about the easy motion torque sensor they use a tmm4 that's what this metal plate is so it measures strain when you push down so it's not just, oh, they're pedaling. It's like, how hard are you pushing? And there are a bunch of different settings with different levels of assist. But the thing about that is if you're just sitting there and you kind of put some weight on that pedal, it can kind of activate on you. Or if you're coasting and this chain is bouncing a little bit, you can actually activate the torque sensor that way too. So there are a couple times where I've just been like not expecting the motor to start and then it starts 
And so it's great that you can over, override that with those brake levers on both sides and relatively clean cockpit in part because there's no twist throttle on this one. It's pedal assist only, which is interesting. I've seen Easy Motion kind of transitioning in that direction. They've got the Bosch jumper and the Bosch cross, which you know has the mid drive. And of course that's not throttle powered. None of the Bosch systems are, but this could be, they totally could. And a lot of their like Neo and even some of the Evos did have twist throttles. This one does not. Um, so I got, you know, if you want a throttle, you're not gonna get it here. I love that they still kept this cute little display easy to take off and bring with you. It comes with a little storage pouch. Um, you know, maybe you're bombing down the hill after the end of a ride up a snow, snowy peak. You could take that off so that it doesn't get trashed if you take a spill. So that's kind of cool. Locked it on. Love the rubber bands up here. FSA headset. This, I did all the specs and dimensions and stuff, which will be back at the website for you, you know, so you can see about standover height and stuff, but it's an 18 inch frame. Measured the seat tube right there, which is kind of medium. And I think it only comes in that one frame size. I was also confused because they have on the website, the Evo 29er and then Evo 29 Pro. And it's like, well, I did want to show you the battery pack. So we've got these keys. You can just stick it in down here and twist. This port right here, this is actually where you can charge the battery on the bike. So that was one of my big complaints on the Neo series. You had to take the battery off every time. You don't have to do that with the Evo series, but you do need this special like dongle adapter to go from frame charging to battery charging. There's two different ports. So keep that in mind. Also, if you're plugged in and you're charging and you back the bike up, this crank arm goes right by the charging port and it'll just break the charging plug off. So, you know, strategically, as far as positioning on that, just be careful. Okay, so twist, and then I'm gonna pull up on this. I'm gonna be careful not to hit this seat tube because kind of chip the plastic that way. And I have seen these chips. You see, it's pretty tight fit. There we go. Again, it's about 5.6 pounds. You could bring this inside and charge it and keep it nice that way. There's the charging port. See how that's different? It's like a circle. And then it's got this little LED battery indicator. If we press that button right there. So you can, you know, you're, you're off the bike, you're inside, you're like, is it charged? I don't know. Press the button and then you'll know. That's what the bike looks like when the battery is completely off. Okay, so now we need to fit it back in there. Again, a little bit of a tight squeeze. And then just make sure, make sure it's like locked on there for sure. Okay, because you don't want to take off and have it flop off on you. Feels pretty solid. I, I think I've heard these rattle a little bit after a while on, on some of the bikes, but just it's hard to beat that look. Really, really beautiful. So, okay, I think I'm gonna just turn this thing on and talk about the all-wheel drive and how that works. So we come up and we press on and you have to hold it for a little while, it's not immediate. There we go, it's like U3.5, I guess that's the version, 29, gave us some feedback. The display here shows your speed. Right now it's in miles per hour. We can change that. And then it gives us some idea of our battery, three out of five bars, 45%. And then there's assist level. And there are these four different levels. So we're at 100%, down to 70, down to 50, 30, and then zero. So at zero, this is just like a cycle computer. You can cruise around and you have some idea of what's going on, but there are no lights or anything integrated. So it's really just, you know, it's ride stats. If we press the power button over here, right now we're getting total like distance, like odometer, and it's gonna stay in total if we press it total hours, like how long it's been ridden, and then total top speed, miles per hour. We hit power one more time, now it's going to trip. So trip distance, trip time, and trip top speed. And then there's this other like M to go. I mean, I assume that's like range or something, but I don't quite know how that works. I apologize, I have asked and no one's really been able to help. Uh, okay, and then you'll see snow right there. To get to that and to enable that, you have to hold plus and minus or up and down at the same time. And now we can set our wheel size. We're at 29, which is perfect. Then we hit power to go to the next thing. Units, miles per hour. And then snow. This is where we can choose from a bunch of different settings. It usually starts off at off. So you're just like rear wheel drive, I guess. And then we arrow up and it's like rear, I don't know, and then arrow up again, front, I think, and then up one more time, eco, uh, you know, and then, oh, there we go, oh, it's the top one, and it doesn't loop, so you have to go up, 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 up. 
I was powering this on and off and taking the display on and off before and it wasn't remembering. So I had to come in every time to get to snow. So I think I'm good. Press power and it's asking me battery size, 36 volt, 11.6 amp hours. Kind of a, you know, it's decent, a little bit above average. And now we're back to 29. So in order to get out of this menu, you actually, I think you have to hold power for quite a while. And I was always worried it was gonna turn it off. There we go, sweet. So total snow, ready to go. This thing is set and it is backlit, which is kind of cool. You have to I think, hold the down arrow for a couple seconds and you get a little light icon. And uh, yeah, let's just hop on this thing and I'll show you as best I can with the camera what this sounds like. It's actually pretty fun. Like, I'm not worried about losing traction on these streets, but I was climbing the hill and it was like, yeah, I'm getting some more power. So you might not get the same range in part because these are big knobby tires and there's two motors pulling off that battery pack, but it did help me. And my experience riding in snow and, and like slippery conditions is that like that front wheel drive, that pulling does help to keep you on track versus just being pushed forward and potentially sliding out like that. So having a little bit of power from both wheels, is probably gonna be a good thing. I think this is a really cool concept. It's one of the few all wheel drive electric bikes I've seen. A lot of companies like to be like, oh, all wheel drive, front hub motor, and you pedal and push the rear, all wheel drive. That's BS in my opinion, it's just marketing. So for it to actually have two motors and for them to be kind of quiet and efficient and so well matched, yeah, this is an expensive bike. It's kind of a niche product, but it still gets you the 20 miles per hour, the torque sensing, like easy motion. I'm a fan of their stuff. I think they've done a pretty good job on this, but I must say that sometimes with some of their bikes, they skimp and, and like they have really short handlebars. That is not the case here. They don't have lockers, they have ergonomic grips. You don't want that for a mountain bike. And then a lot of times just the drivetrain, it's like you have a lot of gears, but to have Dior XT is definitely cool. So yeah, I got to hand it to them with this bike. I feel like they didn't skimp so much. Okay, so right behind me, there's a steep kind of hill section. I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna have to pedal the whole time because this is pedal assist only. So I can't really give you an idea of like how powerful it is, but I can tell you it feels pretty solid. I'm gonna go ahead and just arrow up to the highest level of assist so it's more pronounced. And this is what I'm talking about. If I just kind of lean into it, hear the motor. And it, it's a really sort of slow cutout. It's, it's not very responsive when you stop pedaling. And I think they do that on purpose to reduce surge because if it was responsive, it might be like power, power, power with like each pedal stroke. Instead, it's more like power and just keeps going. So here we go. I'm in a lower gear and I'm helping, but I am having to push a little bit more. And this is a steep hill. You can see I'm really climbing. It's slowing down. I think I would probably shift down right now if I weren't holding the camera. Huh. And that's the other thing. If you are climbing, there's not gonna be as much weight on that front wheel. So regardless of having a motor there, you're not gonna get a lot of traction. Still climbing, but not nearly as steep right here and felt a lot better. So I've got us aimed at the front wheel here. You can kind of listen to it and see how it responds. And the highest level of assist. Okay, we hit our 20 miles right there. Pretty good. Definitely delay on that pedal. That was only one big pedal stroke. Brakes work really well. And again, the steering feels pretty light, pretty nimble. So I think, I think that extra weight is really just the, just the motor. Now here's the rear motor. This is where most of the power and force is going to be generated. I'm gonna shift through just the different gears one of the benefits of having hub motors on something like this versus doing a mid-drive is that you can shift sort of unimpeded. There's no mashing, no extra tension or wear being produced. The motor's just gonna kick in and it has to have a wider range. I um, mean, it's not quite as efficient, but it's gonna be a little bit quieter and a little bit easier on the drivetrain.
I've had a blast reviewing this thing, just cruising around. Again, I want to thank Electric Cyclery and Laguna Beach for this. I hope this bike finds a home. Maybe it's someone who rides in sort of in the sand, but this isn't going to do quite as well as a fat tire bike in that situation because it's so soft. It's definitely a niche product, but it's cool. For the full write up on this and some other easy motion electric bikes, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. And if you have one of these, you've tried it in the snow. I think the guys at Blue Monkey Bicycles in Utah have, they shot a video. Good, good stuff. They have a good channel. Check it out, chime in, and of course, ride safe.